Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to Sister to Sisters this evening, ladies and gentlemen. And on my left, I'd like to welcome our guest. To my left, we have Miss Bramwell, and on my right, we have Miss Ann. We are our topic today, ladies and gentlemen, is overcomers. Here, Miss Ann is an overcomer of domestic violence, and on my left, Miss. Bramwell, Mrs. Bramwell, forgive me, is a survivor of being a pastor's wife. Not just a survivor, but an overcomer, Lord, of being a pastor's wife. And anyone that's a pastor's wife knows the challenges that a spouse of a pastor faces. All glory to God. So we'll begin with Miss Ann. Miss Ann, how long has it been that you were in the domestic in your relationship? How long since we split, you mean? Yes. Um, it has been almost four years. Almost four years. Mm -hmm. So when you were in your abusive relationship, were there any children involved? Yes. Now, how did you, and, and I don't want to get too much involved in it, but, but exactly what entailed your domestic relationship? What, what, what? What did it entail? How did you get in it? How did you manage to get out of it? And how long were you in the relationship? Um, well, I've been in a couple, actually. Um, the, the first one, I was married very young. Um, it, it didn't start off that way. Mm -hmm. um, he was in the military. Um, I quickly became far away from family and friends and kind of isolated um at that particular time years ago there was a lot of things going on crazy in the world um 9 11 happens there was a lot of different things going on um he suffered from ptsd um i think that's what started the situation mm -hmm. um and it very rapidly progressed okay. from there okay. to emotional and physical abuse and yeah. So how long were you in the relationship and were there any signs that, that prior to your becoming married with him, were there any signs that were indi indicating or indicative of there being a, a, a pattern or, or a history of abuse? Absolutely not. Not at all? No. And, and Hmm. Okay. If you could tell any of our viewers about signs to look out for, because there had to, I mean, uh, did he just go from being the loving person that he was to no signs, no symptoms, just to becoming abusive, or there had to be a precursor to it? He, if, he became very angry. Okay. Um, he, like I said, it was... It was almost an instant for me. I didn't see anything. I, I did not see it coming. Okay. Um, it, it's almost just a snap. Um, he was always that person that would champion everyone else if we were out somewhere to a party or, you know, something and he saw somebody getting rough with a girl or talking down to their girlfriend or spouse or whatever he was always that person that would jump to her defense okay he was that very southern gentleman that you know loved his mama and you know if you you didn't hit women you didn't do any of this and it was almost it, it was extremely out of character okay um the first time that it happened and then like i said it just progressed. Okay. He took everything out, all of his stresses, everything out on me. Were, were your children affected by it, even though earlier in our conversation, I know you said they were, they were young, but were, because even though they see that when they're, when they're younger, they do have a remembrance of it. So do you, do they recall any of it? Do, were they, because children, when they're in that relationship, they become scarred as a result of it. My, my oldest remembers um, bits and pieces. Okay. He was about three and four. Mm 
Um, he remembers a few things, mm -hmm. but thank goodness that he doesn't remember the worst part. It, a lot, yeah. He just remembers dad being mean. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I always tried to shield the kids, mm -hmm. and if he started that kind of thing, I tried to get away from the situation and kind of at least get away from the kids. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just didn't want them to be subjected to that. Mm -hmm. It just, um, and again, it's, it's embarrassing, mm -hmm. um, but you do want to protect your kids from that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I think I did a pretty good job protecting them from that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Now, I, I want our viewers to, 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 to really understand exactly what it was that you went through, because the fact that you're an overcomer, they see you, you don't have any, you know, you, you look fine. So mm -hmm. can you share with our viewers, what were some of the things that, that you experienced in your abusive relationship? And also, I want you to think about the latter part of this question and think about if you could do it again, what you know the signs that you would be things that you would be looking for so in your new in your in the next relationship you know there are certain things that you would be looking out for um one thing i noticed and i didn't until the second um like i told you before i had had a traumatic experience my first marriage i said you know i'm never getting married again mm -hmm. i i just I'm not doing this again. Um, my my husband came along. Um, he said the right things. He was very supportive and very sweet and was that person who sent flowers every week. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every week at work I would get a huge bouquet of roses or something. Um, wrote love letters. I mean, just over-the-top stuff. Um, then it slowly started easing away from a lot of my friends. We started doing things only with his family or only with his friends. Um, I didn't really have much of a say in things. Um, that I, I guess I ignored. Mm -hmm. um, let me, let, let's pause on that. And I, 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 I want to ask you, and just think about this, and I'll, I'm gonna switch over to my other guests, but think about if you, If you could see yourself outside of what you were experiencing, because one of the things that being in the relationship, in an abusive relationship, is they try to alienate you and ostracize you away from everyone because that way they can be demanding. Did you notice any of that going on in your relationship? Not in the beginning. Okay. Not in the beginning. Um, like I said, it was a slow progression. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, okay. it's towards the end of my marriage. I, the first was, was worse. Um, he got to the point where um, he would drive me to and from work. Mm -hmm. um, if it was my day off, he would take my keys. Um, I was not allowed to go anywhere or do anything without him. Um, if I went to the store by myself, I had a certain time frame that if he gave me 40 minutes, mm -hmm. I had to be back. If it was 40 minutes and 30 seconds, there would be repercussions. Um, 
he would look over my list. If I said I was going to the store for these items, I better come home with these items. Um, everything was very controlled, hmm. just extremely controlled. Mm -hmm. I had no friends other than my coworkers that he knew nothing about mm -hmm. um, or his friends. That's it. Mm -hmm. My family was in Michigan at that time. We were either in Texas or in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I didn't see them. Um, I would always come up with an excuse why they couldn't come visit mm -hmm. or why I couldn't come visit. Um, I didn't talk to them very much. And we were, I grew up in a very close family. Um, it just, yeah, I was very, very isolated. Um, One of the things that they try to keep you. Mm -hmm. from, yes. Yes. Every little aspect of my life was controlled. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yeah. I'm thankful to, to, to say that yeah, you are an overcomer. And I'm glad that you're here to share your story. Thanks. Thank you. I'm going to turn over here and ask Mrs. Bramwell. How is it being a pastor's wife? I know their demands on the pastor uh, is extreme. And so, please, in your own words, take us into the life of a pastor's wife. A pastor's wife, the life of a pastor's wife is first, I'm first a wife. The pastor was married to me as a wife before he became a pastor. So my role as a pastor's wife is to be supportive, mm -hmm. is to be supportive and to encourage the kids. Um, we've been married a long time. Mm -hmm. I think that helps. It helped that we grew together. Mm -hmm. We made this decision together. Um, we decided to follow Christ together. We got baptized together. And it makes a difference in that way. Mm -hmm. So I do not have a pastor's wife box for anyone who knows me. Okay. <laughs> um, everyone outside looking in think that there is a specific box you're supposed to fit mm -hmm. in, right, Ed? <laughs> and knows me, we work together. <laughs> There, I fit in none of those boxes. I don't know what the box is. Mm -hmm. I don't know what shape the box is. But everyone on the outside looking in think that you're supposed to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to act a certain way. You're supposed to, I don't know mm -hmm. <laughs> what you're supposed to. I'm a Christian mm -hmm. first. That's what keeps me mm -hmm. <laughs> and keeps everyone's marriage together. And then a wife. Mm -hmm. Then I think of a pastor's wife. I don't even think of it. He is just my husband. This is what the Lord called him to do. Mm -hmm. And um, when, he called, when God called him to do, I supported the call. Okay. You thought I was the one going to Oakwood. The bags were packed. I had called and find where we go into housing. <laughs> the forms were filled out. <laughs> he just had to sign. <laughs> so that's the role. The role is to be a supportive wife. Mm -hmm. I know just in, in, in seeing how my pastor goes here and there, and he's pet the pastor of two churches. So I know that as with there being a two churches, you've got more members. So in there, in there, we we're in a time now where things are difficult. We with the virus that's going on. So we've got more deaths that are going on. We've got more anxiety. So how do you handle the, the everyday challenges of the pastor being pulled away when you guys have as a family, you know, as a family gathering, you've got something planned, but being the pastor, he's got, he's got called away for church business or a death or something. So how do you, how do you man manage to you know, handle that, the juggling of that and the pulling away from family events or something that's, that's planned. 
it's a balancing act. It's a balancing act all the time, every day. It is, you have to be called to be a pastor's wife. You can't just get up and say, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. You won't like it if that's just, if that's what you think. Mm -hmm. You're doing it for the prestige. It, it's not. You are a servant of God mm -hmm. first. So because I am a servant of God, we didn't just arrive at this situation together. We did travel together. We did the Bible studies together. We work together. We build God's work together. Even my son, he was a part of it. We try to include the family in everything that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yes, my husband will sacrifice himself. And my job is to make sure he doesn't sacrifice himself too much. Behind every good man is a good woman. <laughs> I thought I'd throw that in for my viewers. Um, again, overcomers. So how do you incorporate? Now, I know that you're a nurse. I also know that you're going to school. How do you juggle all of the things that are going on? And like you said, you're not identified as the pastor's wife. You are Mrs. Bramwell, but you are, in fact, a pastor's wife. So how do you manage the children, the school, the work, and being able to corral everything together so that it flows the way that it does as we see it flow so easily for you? <laughs> it flows easily. I don't know about that. I think we just balance it. I think we communicate. Okay. We communicate, although my calls might be rejected mm -hmm. because he's talking to you, Cynthia, that have an issue going on. And Amen. right now that's an issue or he's in a meeting and my call is rejected. I don't take it personal. Mm -hmm. He's not rejecting me. He's just unable to answer that call at that particular point time mm -hmm. so I sent a text remember such and such this is what's happening and then he calls me back right away when he's finishing he said hon you called me are you okay is there something going on mm -hmm. you know in case I <laughs> hon I was just calling to check on you I actually don't even have anything going on mm -hmm. you know and this is the communication we have to communicate we do set a time set aside time mm -hmm. um, my husband will schedule something with you mm -hmm. to do a recording. And I have to, my job is to remind him, you're not available on Sunday. You might want to do that on Monday. <laughs> I remember that to be exact. <laughs> you might want to do that on Monday. It's somebody's birthday on Sunday mm -hmm. and we got plans. Mm -hmm. um, so I, we, do, we do balance each other. Okay. And when we can't balance each other, we just look at each other and hug. Cause we don't have, we don't know what to say. I'm, I'm speechless because I just love that. <laughs> All right, so if you, if you had it to do over again, what would you tell a, one of our viewers that may be thinking, oh, I would love to be a, a pastor's wife. I'd love to, you know, because there are, some people have that ideology. So what would you, and I love the fact that you said that you grew together, you were baptized together, you studied together, because when you come together, that makes it that much easier and that much enjoy, more, more enjoyable. So what, what words of wisdom would you give to someone who's saying, oh, that's my, that's what I want to do? Like you said, it's not, it, it's not some, it's not for everyone. So what would you give somebody that was thinking along that line that that would be their life. So I would tell them, um, take that to, in prayer. You really have to pray and fast about a situation like that. Because yes, I'm married to a pastor, but he's also sharing his time and his life with 200 other people. Mm -hmm. So once your husband know that, okay, there's a priority level, mm -hmm there is a priority level. We are, I think we're just good friends. I think you have to be friends with that person. You, you, God will teach you not to be jealous because he's talking. Let me share a story with you. <laughs> My husband announced that, okay, he doesn't kiss the young members of the church. And he announced and said, oh, he only kissed the seniors. Guess who were lined up at the door? All the seniors. All the seniors. And he had to kiss every one of them outside the door. So, I mean, I just thought it was hilarious, 
you know, and they loved it. And I just thought it was funny. <laughs> and we laughed about it later, you know. But I think to give advice to someone, I think that God has to be, has to be your love. You have to love God mm -hmm. to, do, to be a pastor's wife. You have to realize that it's a sacrifice. A pastor's job is a servant's job. If you don't like to serve mm -hmm. or you never had to work with the public or be a waiter, waitress, mm -hmm. it might not be for you. It might not be for you. But God is the one that designed and put two people together. So once he put the two people together, that he chose mm -hmm. the two of y'all together, then that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I will ask you this question. What... What kind of balance do you have in your home? I mean, are there, are there certain no-nos that you cannot, that, that you don't allow to have occur in your home or in your, you know, as far as space-wise and time-wise, as far as delegating or, or uh, your time, does, if that makes any sense. So for instance, would, if, if, if you guys had a vacation plan, mm -hmm. something came up. Are you able to separate that? I mean, because if, if someone had to cancel, that would be a little, a little unnerving. With it, but with it being the pastor, does that, does that justify it? In terms of a vacation? Yeah, because I know you guys go on vacation. So when you have some, if something no, ever arises. My husband plans the vacation very well. He's ready to go. He doesn't let anything get in touch with that time because you're always giving. Mm -hmm. You actually have to take time for yourself mm -hmm. and to be balanced because if he's not balanced or he's not healthy or he's not eating properly, then he's not good for anyone else. Right. And that includes me mm -hmm. and that includes the kids. Mm -hmm. So you have to think of, I think of all of those things. When he's going too much, I'm like, okay, you're going. We take turns. We divide chores. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, this is your area. This is your... Pastor still has to do chores. He still has to wash the dishes, you know. <laughs> he still cooks. He does all of those things. He still wash. My favorite thing. His laundry smells better than mine. But he does all those things. And it's, it's a constant balancing, a constant communication. Everyone knows their role. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their chores. Mm -hmm. And it's all lined up. Okay. And we support each other. We're at a stage in our marriage now where we, we do not fuss about the simple things. Mm -hmm. I think, I think Anne, like, if, okay, <laughs> you didn't do your dishes tonight, we're not going to freak out. Mm -hmm. It's okay. If I can't get to clean, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, you come to my house and I'm like, Cynthia is a madhouse today. It, it just is what it is. Mm -hmm. And we don't let that dictate or depict our attitude for that day. Mm -hmm. Which it easily can for some. Right. Yes. So, so we don't do that. Okay. So you've got a good, sounds like you have a good balance a good respect, a good understanding, and of course, with the head of your, your marriage being God, where can you really go wrong, honestly? Yes. Okay, now, okay. I'd like to ask a question, and I hope it's not too much to ask, but if you could share with our viewers what it is that, how did you overcome being in the abusive relationship? Um, it, it took almost losing my life to wake me up okay. um, it was a very traumatic situation um, and almost dying opened my eyes oh. um, I had to realize that if I didn't get out he would kill me. Um, um, there were no marks on the face. 
It was things that, if there was physical abuse, it was never on the face. Um, hmm. A few times, but when the kids were little, you can blame it on uh, the kids hit you in the face with a, a toy, mm -hmm. or you know you come up with excuses. Mm -hmm. um, you buy a lot of concealer. Um, you wear long sleeve shirts in the summertime. You know it's. Um, I got very good at hiding from my family. My fa my, I'm very very close to my father. Um, mm -hmm. My brother also brothers, and none of them were aware of either one, actually. First one, it was a lot easier to hide from my family because I lived out of state. Um, the second, I just, I hid it. We didn't fight in, in front of people. We didn't, mm -hmm. I, I tried to keep as much hidden as possible. If I saw it escalating, if I saw that glimpse in his eye and I knew that okay well he's about to take that drink and I could start seeing the signs so I would try to defuse the situation by walking away or trying to leave or something um, so they, they were kind of surprised when I left my husband um, mm -hmm. this last time we were married for 12 years when I left and um, they actually took his side because they thought he was a great guy. He, he made great money. We had a great house. You know, the family, the kids, he was, they came over for barbecues and he was very close with my family. And like I said, that very loving person. And so they blamed me. And finally, I had to tell him the truth, you know, about the physical abuse, mental abuse, the cheating, like, I mean, everything. And they, again, got mad at me <laughs> for not saying something before. Mm -hmm. okay. But um, it's very embarrassing. So that's one thing that keeps you there. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that. It keeps you stuck in the mud. So it does. It does, because you don't want to leave because you're embarrassed of the situation. So I had to think of more than just myself. Mm -hmm. I had to think of my kids. Um, I had to, I, I was raised on a front pew of a Southern Pentecostal church. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, I lost sight of God. Um, being in that that type of situation I I didn't think that he heard me so what was the point mm -hmm. um, you're broken mm -hmm. and I I had to be almost completely broken to realize it okay. and you were able to get out yep so it, it takes getting down to the worst of the worst okay. to be able to find the strength to get out. Okay. I'm glad you did. Yeah. And thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. All right, Mrs. Bramwell, can you tell us what it is and how you overcame some of the obstacles that you endured while being the wife of a pastor? What were some of the obstacles that you may have had to overcome? So the obstacle is distance. Um, my husband would travel. Mm -hmm. um, even before we were located in one church, he would travel weeks at a time. And he would be engulfed in that. And he didn't see anything else apart from that. Um, I think appreciating the time that he's home mm -hmm. or appreciating how he 
expresses his love language mm -hmm. to me. Um, it wasn't always easy. It wasn't always easy. It wasn't, it wasn't a prestige, you know, there wasn't like a prestigious situation because mm -hmm. I'm a pastor's wife. Mm -hmm. You're actually, you're actually go through more challenges than the average marriage mm -hmm. because you're always sharing. You're always, you might feel, okay, am I taken away from God? Am I being selfish because I want him here right now, <laughs> you know? I, are, am I being selfish or the kids need him right now? Mm -hmm. um, those kind of challenges, it lets you realize that you have to be a whole person. Mm -hmm. You can't depend on, I can't depend on my husband to bring me joy. Mm -hmm. You have to be your own, you have to be your own person and have your own happiness mm -hmm. and the things that you like to enjoy. And, 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 and what does God mean for you? Mm -hmm. You know, your own relationship. Mm -hmm. Because salvation is individual thing, mm -hmm. you know, being married to the pastor is not going to save me. So, so being a whole person, whatever, whatever, whenever we're broken or, or we're going through a challenging time, figuring out how to fix it, mm -hmm. bring us closer, bringing the ends together. And you, you appreciate, I think as I'm getting older now, we've been married longer, you appreciate the simple things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the simple things, a conversation, time, just sitting there and saying nothing uh, is, is appreciated. We will sit together in the den. We've become the old couple, I think. You know the old couple that sit together and they say nothing? Yeah. <laughs> and? You're the old couple now. You sit together and you say nothing. Uh -huh. And I'm getting up. And my husband is like, where are you going? I've been sitting here. Oh, you didn't say nothing. I didn't think you needed anything. Oh, the house is a mansion. I'm going on the West Wing. No, I'm just going to the bathroom. I'll be right back. I think you appreciate the unity in the silence. At I don't know if that time. makes sense. At the same, At the same time. time mm -hmm. The unity in the silence. They call that comfort. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So I think that has made me overcome. In the rough time, mm -hmm. I had a book. I would journal. I would just talk to God. Mm -hmm. And I would write it in patto. I wouldn't even write it in English. I would literally write it in patto because God understand however I talk to him. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think the rough times make the good times seem great. Amen. I agree. And, and, and that's what makes it special. Okay. So that's how you overcame. Yes. Okay. Well, I thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, my viewers, our viewers. As you've heard two different stories of overcoming, we know that with God, anything is possible. To be a survivor of domestic violence, to have hospitalizations and numerous other things, and to be sharing your life with a pastor who has a flock of 200 and to be able to be pulled in both directions. So I'd like to thank you ladies. And if you had one thing to say to our viewers that could perhaps keep them from, for you going into an, a domestic relationship for, you know, what sign, you know, looking at some signs, if you had one thing to say to our viewers, what would that be? Well, I would say, keep your eyes open, keep, Mm -hmm. have an open mind look be be very I'm not going to say cautious but maybe watchful view yes watchful um, love yourself mm -hmm. I just that's probably the biggest part just to love yourself there there was 
most of the time I got to the point where I didn't love myself. Mm. And that was the only way I got out. Start loving oneself. I, I had to remember and learn how to love myself. Because it becomes and a And that gave me the strength to, to leave. Oh, and the nice. strength to stand up for myself. And I'm glad that you did. You're here as a result of it. Thank yes. you. And Mrs. Bramwell, if you had one thing to say to a viewer, a pastor's wife that maybe was watching and was having some struggles trying to divide time and share her husband with other members of the church, what advice would you have for her? I would say trust God. Trust God and pray for your husband because a family that is praying together, it is true, it stay, they, we do stay together. A family that's praying together, stay together. Trust God and communicate with your husband. Be honest. Mm -hmm. I, I think that I don't take anything too serious. I don't take any of your stories too serious. I think we literally laugh at ourselves. Mm -hmm. So be honest with yourself. Be open with your spouse. Let them know exactly how you're feeling and why you feel the way you feel mm -hmm. about whatever that situation is. Okay. Okay. And give it to God. Thank you. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that and I pray that you received a blessing and something that will prick your heart, ladies and gentlemen, that if you are going through or you know someone that's going through something that they too can be an overcomer, I encourage you to be there for them. To my viewers, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to Sisters to Sisters. I'd like to thank my panel, Miss Ann, for sharing with her her overcoming situation of domestic violence. And ladies and gentlemen, we all know that's all too real. I'd like to thank Mrs. Bramwell for divulging how she's overcome the stressor sometimes of being a pastor's wife and how she's had to separate and share her time with him. So I'd like to thank you both for sharing your stories with myself and our viewers. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you again for tuning into Sister to Sisters. And I'd like to encourage you to go onto the website of fairhavensda.org as well as ESDAC.org, ladies and gentlemen, and sign in and register. And I again look forward to seeing you next week for Sister to Sisters. You won't want to miss it. Have a good week. <laughs>